Welcome back to Decentralized News. In today's video, our focus is on uh, Frax Finance, which is a stablecoin project. Interestingly, uh, it is uh, also an on-chain protocol that is uh, supposed to mint and manage the Frax stablecoin and uh, maintain its peg through what they call a dual collateral backed and uh, algorithmic mechanism that makes it more scalable and uh, capital efficient uh, than uh, over collateralized stable coins. So Frax also utilizes uh, algorithmic market operations to generate revenue and ensure that the protocol is uh, secure and robust. Give us a like and a subscribe and uh, welcome to our channel. You can always find more uh, on our main site, decentralized.news. So Frax is uh, a project that I did do a kind of like a snippet explain a video previously on uh, just looking more specifically at the token but uh, since there's been uh, a whole lot of controversies uh, around uh, stable coins lately i thought it'd be a good topic to just also put a spotlight on uh, this stable coin so frax finance is essentially a decentralized protocol that can be thought of more like a uh, a fully autonomous on-chain central bank that issues and controls the monetary policy of a fractional algorithmic stablecoin called Frax. So, uh, you know, it's kind of found in the sweet spot between fully collateralized and uncollateralized stablecoins. And it's actually the first decentralized stablecoin that utilizes a dynamically uh, adjusted collateral ratio to successfully maintain its peg stability. So when we look at just the current landscape of uh, stable coins in general, um, this is one that stands out in that, you know, it is uh, uh, an on-chain protocol that uh, manages this uh, fractional algorithmic stable coin backed partly by external and also partly by internally generated collateral. So to understand their value uh, proposition is, uh, it, or just like, just to understand its standing among other stable coins, it's actually necessary to summarize uh, the current uh, landscape of stable coins for, um, obviously we have the fiat, uh, fiat pegged um, stable coins uh, that are, uh, pegged to the US dollar, for example, more broadly, these uh, are generally sort of classified under centralized and decentralized with centralized stable coins representing fully backed fiat collateralized digital assets that are issued or controlled by a central company or custodian. Uh, in the case of uh, Tether USD, T or USDC, which is issued by through Circle, or Binance is uh, BUSD, which actually are the main ones that uh, currently uh, rule the stablecoin market. So stable coins that are centralized uh, are sort of like the simplest uh, assets uh, because obviously these central uh, issuers mint them in exchange for dollars and then redeem them to get the ball that those dollars back at an exchange ratio of one to one or that is what it's supposed to be technically so this means that the issuers must be trusted to always have an equal or greater supply of the dollars or other highly liquid or low risk assets like commercial paper or treasuries that are, should be on their balance sheets in order to honor any redemptions that may come forth. So while the market generally, you know, sort of deems these stable coins safe, uh, centralized stable coins nevertheless actually do carry considerable custodial and censorship risks. So decentralized stable coins, on the other hand, typically fall into two categories, uh, over collateralized and non collateralized. Uh, the most notable uh, of the um, former so we're talking about the over collateralized is uh, the maker protocol which allows users to mint the die stable coin by locking up external crypto collateral in a smart contract as uh, a collateralized debt position so the cpds must be over collateralized meaning the total assets locked in maker must always exceed the aggregate a value of DAI's circulating supply. While this actually makes DAI relatively safe and reliable in terms of its uh, peg resilience, uh, it also makes it capital inefficient and difficult to scale as it can only grow uh, with the demand for leverage. So there have been many attempts uh, to create more scalable and capital efficient stable coins, but uh, 
the most uh, notable one <laughs> ended up being uh, Terraform Labs. This uh, uh, recently collapsed uh, UST, and uh, before it actually failed, it was briefly the third largest stable coin on the market with a capitalization of around 18 billion uh, during its highs. And uh, as a non collateralized or algorithmic stable coin, UST maintained a price stability through an arbitrage swapping process with uh, Terra's uh, native governance token, which is Luna. So when the UST was traded below $1, arbitrages could actually burn it for $1 worth of Luna to profit on that difference. Likewise, when it was traded above a dollar, arbitrages could also mint it using $1 worth of Luna and then sell it on the open market for profit, increasing the supply and eventually actually bringing uh, its price back to the desired peg. Despite obviously this temporary success, UST eventually imploded in a catastrophic 40 billion dip uh, spiral event that we all witnessed uh, just recently and uh, it brought the whole ecosystem down with it. So, you know, uh, due to it being entirely dependent on internally generated lunar collateral, the system actually proved, uh, you know, gravely vulnerable to the risk of a bank run in this case eventually. Um, yeah, so that's uh, kind of how that collapsed. But um, between over collateralized uh, stable coins like DAI and the non collateralized or fully algorithmic uh, UST type of stable coins, there seems to be also like a, just a niche that leverages the strength of both systems while trying to minimize the faults. And uh, Frax Finance uh, is uh, one of these uh, projects that is looking to do that with its uh, permissionless open source entirely on-chain stable protocol that provides and uh, autonomously actually manages a highly scalable decentralized stable coin in the form of FRAX. So F-R-A-X is the ticker. It's a, an abbreviation of fractional algorithmic, which describes the mechanism the protocol leverages in order to maintain its uh, peg to the US dollar. So a uh, fractional algorithmic um, simply means that a fraction of the stable coin is backed by external collateral, primarily USDC, which is another stable coin and is uh, partly algorithmically also backed with the protocol's native governance token, which is uh, FXS, uh, which uh, allows uh, you know, the accrual fees, uh, seniorage uh, revenues and uh, profits from the protocol's uh, open market operations as well. So the protocol then decides the precise ratio between the external and the internal backing using a PID controller, which typically adjusts uh, the collateral ratio based on demand uh, for the FRAC stable coin and external market conditions as well. So while that might sound uh, complicated, uh, the logic behind the mechanism is pretty simple. In fact, uh, using a PID controller, the protocol is supposed to be uh, uh, it's supposed to autonomously, you know, sort of uh, adjust the external and internal collateral ratio necessary to mint or to redeem the FRAX based on the direct information that's coming from the market. So during sustained periods of FRAX uh, expansion, for example, the protocol will lower the uh, collateral ratio so that less external collateral and more FXS are needed to actually mint or redeem the stable coin. So the reasoning behind that is during expansionary sort of uh, periods, the market effectively sort of signals trust in the internal collateral backing fracks, indicating that to the protocol that, you know, it should lower the collateral ratio to accommodate that belief to better facilitate a growth. So more specifically, the protocol um, also lowers the collateral ratio so that uh, less USDC and more FSX, uh, FXS uh, back uh, FRAX each time its price exceeds the targeted peg of a uh, dollar. And uh, conversely, the FRAX falls below a dollar. The protocol also raises the collateral ratio to increase market confidence in FRAX by increasing its backing from an external to a more sound source. So, you know, to keep things transparent, the collateral ratio is typically explicitly known on Fraxis uh, Finance's uh, front page, for instance. So it is uh, quite easy to also keep up with that. So I don't know if you guys have heard anything about Frax, let me know. I don't hold any myself. I just um, think, you know, it's a, a good time to start looking at uh, what's going on, especially in the stablecoin market because uh, there will come a time when uh, if, uh, let's say, there's a problem with USDT, 
uh, or some, um, like they say, you know, you might have uh, uh, concerns with the USDC in terms of uh, how that could be effectively, um, you know, be complicated for you to use it if, uh, you know, it falls in line with uh, particular regulations, etc. Uh, you might want to know what are the decentralized alternatives are, are they in the market so let me know if this is the uh, one of those that uh, we should all be looking more into share your thoughts and don't forget to check out the links in the description to my books tokenized trillions blockchain applied they will teach you all about real world asset tokenization on the blockchain and also join our telegram and our discord server as well links are in the description and uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, turn on the notification bell. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.